<coughs> Leg kick there is the fancy for me. I only do real fighting. Nothing fancy like Leg kick there. Leg kick there was a priest, and he wasn't allowed to hurt anyone. And therefore, you see, that he does a lot of disarms in his work. I've come across countless of statements like this over the past few years that I've been working with Leg kick there. And needless to say, I don't really agree with them. So let's have a look at the question today. How fancy is Legator exactly? So before we begin, I don't really do context related videos all that often, but given the pandemic and me not being able to shoot that much fencing videos recently, um, I thought it would be a good idea to do some context-related videos on Lekuchner. So I'll take a couple of uh, frequently asked questions or statements that are made about his work and make a video about them. So today we'll have a look at the fanciness of the manuscript. So before we do that, uh, let's first define what is fancy. And then we can look at how many plays of the 456 in the entire manuscript can be considered fancy. And then finally, we'll have a look at, okay, but isn't there anything that you can use in a life or death situation after all? So first, what is fancy? Well, I think a lot of people, um, what a lot of people mean by fancy is that Lekuchner might be considered a bit complicated, uh, over the top, uh, sometimes even uh, not very effective, and um, at the very least, not something you'd use in a life or death situation. So, now that we know that, can we find any plays in the manuscript that really conform to this stereotype? Well, let's have a look at the usual suspect. Let's go and look at words like Fechtula, for instance. Now, Fechtula was a public fencing competition, and the idea, of course, was to impress the audience with something really ballsy and spectacular. And, yes, there's actually plays that describe something to be used in a Fechtula, but it's only two of them. Uh, the first one we can find the chapter on the Becker, and there the idea is that you encounter a fencer who does not know how to fence well, makes really big stupid strikes, so you beat them aside and smack them on their sides. Not very fancy though, is it? But it says use this in effect, you but it's okay. And the other one, it definitely fits the bill. Uh, you go over someone's arm and thrust between your legs, um, and making them hop around like that. A great laugh uh, will be had by all, and that definitely fits the category of fancy that we're looking for. Now, maybe some other words that can single out fancy techniques, like schimpflich, for instance. Well, the word itself, schimpflich, playful, is used throughout the manuscript, but there's only one play that is connected with that word, and it does really fit. You, it's the Taschenau, where you smack someone on the butt cheeks with the flat messer, so okay, let's count that one too. We have like two, maybe three plays, if you're generous now. And of course, there's plenty of other plays throughout the entire manuscript where you will find something that we would definitely classify as fancy. Um, you can see them popping up all over the screen now. But counting all of those, just from the top of my head, the ones that really that I really could remember as being super fancy, still we don't really get to much more than ten plays, which but compared to a 456 of them is like not more than 2% really. So that's not all that much. But Oscar, I hear you say, there's plenty of disarms and other non-lethal techniques, right? We would consider them fancy. And yes, if we were to consider non-lethal techniques to be also fancy because you can't use them in a life or death situation, that remains debatable, but for the sake of argument, let's have a look at that. Mm, let's actually try and quantify that. Well, thankfully, I don't have to do that. I can just uh, have a look at the work that Yoli Takala did on this. And he had a look at all the hits that are made in Lekuchner um, and quantified them what, what type of hit are they and what target do they hit. And non-lethal techniques make up about one-third of the entire manuscript, as we can see here. Um, still, one-third of 456 plays is quite a decent amount. But if we were to have to characterize the manuscript, uh, you'd see that the other two thirds tend to be thrusts or cuts towards the head or torso. So can we characterize this as a manuscript that's mostly fancy and non-lethal, or a manuscript where you're mostly supposed to stab people in the face? 
based on the numbers, I'd say the latter, really. Still, though, um, one third of 456 plays is quite a lot. So, isn't there really anything that is isn't useful in a life or death scenario. Well, once again, there is a number of plays that would fit the bill. If we, for instance, look at the word ernstlich as opposed to schimpflich. Schimpflich means playful, ernstlich means for real or seriously. So, serious plays. Then we can come up with a couple of examples. There's the Duplieren, where Lechner states that if you really uh, are fencing someone for real, you need to make a proper hit, then you can use Duplieren. And fair enough, getting a um, uh, doubling behind the blade into your face is not something that you are going to shrug off lightly, right? Uh, there's also the Ansetzen, where you, before an attack is made, just thrust someone in the face with a long point. Once again, I can definitely see that working in a situation where you quickly want to make an end to a fight. So, we've got those options. But, once again, just using the wording of the manuscript uh, doesn't paint the entire picture. We've got the Notchduk, which is described as a play uh, that is meant for a situation where you are without a weapon and you have not the option to flee. Not something that would occur during a Fechtula because the, the, the halt would be called and about would be ended, right? Uh, this is something that happens if you find yourself late at night and some fellow townsman decides to cleave your head open with a messer, right? Uh, that's where the notchstick comes in. Self-defense, really. Um, so once again, we have that. And we can use different criteria as well. So if we look at plays that are relatively low in risk and high in trauma, so they would end the fight relatively quickly by the trauma they cause, you find a number of other sets of plays that would work really well. Um, a prime example of this would be the Lemstück, so the plays where you smack someone's hand really hard. You basically step away as much as you can, and while the opponent is making a strike for you, you smack their hand from below or above. And a successful hit like that will end a fight, because getting smacked in the hand will probably prevent you from continuing to fight, and sometimes even maim you for life, really. So we've got plays like that that show that there is definitely some potential for real fighting in some of the plays in Lekker's manuscript. So this really leaves us with a couple of questions and final remarks. Um, first of question, why is it that Lekker is still considered to be so fancy then? And I think that's kind of like my fault and the fault of everyone who teaches workshops on Lekker because we like to put those fancy spectacular techniques in. I mean. And why wouldn't you? It's a lot of fun to learn how to put someone in the back. And that's what we included in the workshops, and that's why people enjoy those techniques, because they're fun and spectacular. And with a lot of the material about Le Kuchner that you see online, you also see a preference, uh, even a bias, towards the more spectacular techniques, because it's a lot more fun to fold someone in a pretzel, uh, or see someone being folded, rather than just have a technique where you just humbly stab someone in the face, even though there's a lot more of that in Lechner than pretzel folding, in fairness. So, yeah, it, it's a really a matter of perception, I'd say. And other than that, what, what can be your takeaway from this? Well, I'd say this. The manuscript is really huge. Hans Lechner wrote um, about 456 plays, if I count it correctly, and that means that for every context, there's a number of plays that you can use. You, If you are looking for something fancy, there's plenty of it to be found in the manuscript. At the same time, if you're looking for something that's mostly suited for, for um, self-defense, you can pick your techniques as well. There's plenty of them too. And it's really important, if you work with Lechner, to have a look at what type of context one particular play is meant for. Um, to make sure that you're not like working some through a play with the expectation that it will work as a self-defense thing, well, it's certainly not meant for that. And other than that, getting uh, some fluency in reading the context of a play will also allow you to decide, can I use this properly and effectively in a modern game about, or even a tournament fight? So there's definitely a benefit to that. So study the context, because it really helps. Now, for my closing remarks, um, I'd really like to say that I'm heavily indebted to both Kasper van Dijk and Joli Takala for the research they did in this subject. I really hope that you enjoyed this um, 
really digest all the research that they did, but if you're interested in checking out their work, I've uh, linked to the papers that I've based most of this on below. And other than that, don't forget to still like and subscribe, place a comments if you have any question, and keep your eyes peeled because I'll have some pretty exciting announcements in the near future. Anyway, keep fencing, and I'll catch you in the next one.